live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the eighth year of AWS reInvent. It's 2019, there's over 60,000 in attendance. Seventh year of theCUBE, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, uh, covering all the angles of this broad and massively growing ecosystem. I am Stu Min, and my co-host is Justin Warren, and one of our CUBE alumni are back on the program, Ramin Sayer, who is the president and CEO of Sumo Logic, Booth always at the front of the expo hall. Uh, I, I think anybody that's come to the show has uh, one of the sumo, uh, you know, squish dolls there. Uh, I remember a number of years you actually had live sumos again uh, this at year at the event. So you know, bring us the sixth year you've been at this show. Give us a little bit of the vibe and uh, your experience so far. Yeah, I mean, naturally, when you've been here so many times, it's it's interesting to be back, not only as a practitioner who's attended this many years ago, but now as a partner of AWS, and seeing not only our own community growth in terms of Sumo Logic, but also the community in general that we're here to see. You know, it's a good mix of practitioners and business folks from DevOps to security and much, much more. And as we were talking about before the show, the vendors here are so different now than it was three years ago, let alone six years ago. So it's nice to see. All right, a uh, lot of news from Amazon. Uh, anything specific jump out from you from their side, or uh, I, I know uh, Sumo Logic also has had some announcements this week. Yeah, I mean, like true to Amazon, um, there's always a lot of announcements, and you know what we see is customers need time to understand and, and digest that. There's a lot of confusion, um, but you know, selfishly speaking, from the Sumo side, you know, we continue to be a strong AWS partner. Um, we, we announced uh, another set of services along with AWS at this event. Um, we got some new competencies for container because that's a big aspect of what customers are doing today with microservices. And obviously we announced some new capabilities around our security intelligence capabilities, specifically for cl CloudTrail because that's becoming a really important aspect of a lot of customers' maturation of cloud and also operating in the cloud in this new world. So to walk us through what customers are using CloudTrail to do and how the Sumo Logic connection to CloudTrail actually helps them with what they're trying to do. Well, first and foremost, it's important to understand what Sumo does and then the context of CloudTrail and other services. Um, you know, we started roughly a decade ago with AWS and we built an intelligence platform on top of AWS that allows us to deal with the vast amount of unstructured data in s specific use cases. So one very common use case, very applicable to the users here, is around the DevOps teams. And so the DevOps teams are having a much more complicated and, and difficult time today understanding, ascertaining where trouble, where problems reside and how to go troubleshoot those. It's not just about a siloed monitoring tool. That's just not enough. It doesn't provide the analytics or intelligence. It's about understanding all the data from CloudTrail, from EC2, and non-AWS services, so you can appropriately understand these new modern apps that are dependent on these microservices and architectures, and what's really causing the performance issue, the availability issue, and God forbid, a security or breach issue. And that's a unique thing that Sumo provides, unlike others here. Yeah. Now I believe you've actually extended the, cloud, the Sumo support beyond CloudTrail and into some of the Kubernetes services that Amazon offers, like, like EKS, uh, and you also believe it's ES, ESC file end support? Yeah, so and that's just a continuation of a lot of the stuff we've done with respect to our analytics platform. And um, you know, we introduced some things earlier this year at Reinforce with AWS as well. Um, so for around VPC flow logs and the like, and this is a continuation now for CloudTrail. And really what it helps our customers and end users do is better and more proactively be able to detect potential issues, respond to those security issues, and more importantly, automate the resolution process. And that's what's really keen for our users because they're inundated with false positives all the time, whether it's on the ops side, let alone the security side. So Sumo Logic is very unique back to our value prop of providing a horizontal platform across all these different use cases. One being ops, two being cybersecurity and threat, and three being line of business users who are trying to understand what their own users on their digital apps are doing with their services and how to better deliver value. 
Yeah, automation is so important when you've got this, this the scope and scale of cloud and the, and the pace of innovation that's happening with, with all the technology that surround us here at the show. So the, the automation side of things, I think is a little bit underappreciated this year. Uh, we're talking about you know, transformation and we're talking about AI and ML. I think what the automation piece is one, one thing that's a little bit underestimated uh, from, from this year's show. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, our philosophy all along has been you can't automate without AI and ML. And it's, it's proven fact that you know, by next year, the machine data growth is going to be 16 zettabytes. By 2025, it's going to be 75 zettabytes of data. Okay, well that's really impressive in terms of volume of data. The challenge is the tsunami of data that's being generated is how to go decipher what's an important aspect and what's not an important aspect. So you first have to understand from the streaming data services how to be able to dynamically and schema on read be able to analyze that data and then be able to put in context to those use cases that I talked about, and then to drive automation remediation. So it's a multifaceted problem that we've been solving for nearly a decade. In a given day, we're analyzing several hundred petabytes of data, right? And we're trying to distill it down to the most important aspects for you, for your particular role and your responsibility. Yeah, um, we've talked a lot about transformation at this show, and one of, the, one of the big challenges for customers is they're going through that application modernization journey. I wonder if you could bring us inside some of your customers. You know, where are they having success? Where are some of the, the bottlenecks slowing them down from uh, moving along this transformation journey? Yeah, so it's interesting because whether you're a cloud-native company like Sumo Logic or you're aspiring to be a cloud-native company or a cloud-first project going through migration, you have similar problems it's now become a machine scale problem, not a human scale problem, back to the data growth, right? And so some of our customers, regardless of their maturation, are really trying to understand, you know, as they embark on these digital transformations, how do they solve what we call the intelligence gap? And that is because there's so much silos across enterprise organizations today, across development, operations, IT, security, lines of business, that is in its context and its completeness is creating more complexity for our customers. So what Sumo tries to help solve do is solve that intelligence gap in this new intelligence economy by providing an intelligence platform we call continuous intelligence. So what do customers do? So some of our customers use Sumo to monitor and troubleshoot their cloud workloads. So whether it's you know, the Netflix team themselves, right? Because they're born and bred in the cloud. Or it's Huddle who's trying to provide you know, analytics intelligence for players and coaches, right? To insurance companies that are going through the migration and journey to the cloud. Hartford Insurance, New York Life. To sports and media companies, Major League Baseball with this whole cyber sock and what they're trying to do there on the backs of Sumo. To even um, trucking companies like Packard, who's trying to do driverless autonomous cars. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. Everyone is trying to go through the digital transformation or be disrupted. Everyone's trying to gain that intelligence or not just be left behind, but be lapped. And so what Sumo really helps them do is provide one single intelligence platform across DevSec and Ops, bringing these teams together to be able to collaborate much more efficiently and effectively through the true multi-tenant SaaS platform that we've optimized for 10 years on AWS. So we, we heard from Andy yesterday that one of the important uh, ways to drive that transformational change is to actually have the top-down support for that. So you mentioned that you're able to provide that one layer across multiple different teams who, are, who traditionally haven't really worked that well together. So what are you seeing with customers around when they put in Sumo Logic, where does that transformational change come from? Are we seeing the top-down driven change? Is, is that where customers come from? Or is it a little bit more bottom-up where you have de developers and, and operations and security all trying to work together and then that bubbles up to the rest of the organization? What's interesting, it's both for us because a lot of times it depends on the size of the organization where the responsibilities reside. Yep. So naturally a larger enterprise where there's a lot um, of forces of mass because of the different siloed organizations, you have to oftentimes start with the CISO. And we make sure the CISO is a transformation agent. And if they are the transformation agent, then we partner with them to really help get a handle and control on their cybersecurity and threat. And then he or she typically sponsors us into other parts of the line of business, the DevOps teams, like for example, we've seen with Hartford Insurance, right? Or that we saw with F5 Networks and many more. Um, but then there's the flip side of that where we actually start um, in Let's use another example, uh, you know, with, for example, Hearst Media, 
right? They actually started because they were doing a lift and shift to the cloud and their DevOps team in one line of business started with Sumo and expanded the usage and growth. They migrated 32 applications over to AWS and then the, suddenly the security teams got wind of it and then we went top down. Great example of starting you know, bottom up in the case of Hearst or top down in the case of other examples. So the trick here is as we look at embarking upon these journeys with our customers, we try to figure out which technology partners are they using. It's not only the cloud provider, but it's also which traditional on-premise tools versus potentially cloud native services and SaaS applications are adopting. Second is which sort of organizational models are they adopting. So a lot of people talk about DevOps. They don't practice DevOps. And then you can understand that very quickly by asking them, what tools are you using? Are you using GitHub, Jenkins, Artifactory? Are you using all these other tools? And how are you actually getting visibility into your pipeline? Is that actually speeding the delivery of services and digital applications? Yes or no? It's a very binary answer, and if they can't answer that, you know they're aspiring to be. So therefore, it's a consultative sale for us in that mode. If they're already embarking upon that, however, then we use a different approach where we're trying to understand how they're challenged, what they're challenged with, and show other customers, and then it's really more of a partnership. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes, makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. So, one of the debates we had coming into the show is a lot of discussion at multi-cloud around the, 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 uh, the industry. Of course, Amazon doesn't talk specifically about multi-cloud all that well. If you look historically, attempts to manage lots of different environments under a single pane of glass. Uh, we always say pane is spelled P-I-A-N yeah. uh, when you try to do that. Uh, there's been great success. If you look VMware in the data center, VMware didn't cover the entire environment, but vCenter was the center of your you know, admin's world and you had edge cases to manage some of the other environments here. Feels that AWS is extending their footprint with things like outposts and the environments, but there are lots of things that won't be on Amazon, whether it be a second cloud provider, my legacy data center pieces, or anything else there. Sounds like you, you touch many of the pieces, so I'm curious if you just weigh in on what you hear from customers, how they get their arms around the heterogeneous mess that IT traditionally is, and what we need to do as an industry to make things better. You know, for a long time, um, many companies have been bimodal, and now they're trimodal, <laughs> right? Meaning that, you know, they have their traditional and their new aspects of IT. Now they're trimodal in the sense of they have a third leg of that complexity in stool, which is public cloud. And so it's a reality regardless of Amazon or GCP or Azure, that customers want flexibility and choice. And in fact, we see that with our own data. Every year, as you guys well know, we put out an intelligence report um, that actually shows year over year the adoption of not only various technologies, but adoption of technologies used across one cloud provider versus multi-cloud providers. And earlier this year in September, when we put the various uh, new release of the report out, we saw that year over year, there was more than 2x growth in the use of Kubernetes in production. And it was almost three times growth year over year in use of Kubernetes across multiple cloud providers. That tells you something. That tells you that they don't want lock-in. That tells you that they also want choice. That tells you that they're trying to abstract away from the IaaS layer or infrastructure as a service layer, so they have portability, so to speak, across different types of providers for the different types of workload needs, as well as the data sovereignty needs that they have to constantly manage because of regulatory requirements, compliance requirements, and the like. And so this is where actually it benefits someone like Sumo to provide that agnostic platform to customers so they can have the choice but also, most importantly, the value. And this is something that we announced also at this event where we introduced additions to our CloudFlex licensing model that allows you to not only address multi-tiers of data, but also allows you to have choice of where you run those workloads and have choice for different types of data for different types of use cases at different cost models. So again, delivering on that need for customers to have flexibility and choice, as well as you know, the promise of options to move workload from provider to provider without having to worry about the headache of compliance and audit and security requirements, because that's what Sumo uniquely does versus Point Tools. Well, Ramin, I think that's a perfect point to end on. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me. And looking forward to, to, to catching up with Sumo in, in the near here. future. All right, we're at the midway point of three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in Las Vegas, AWS reInvent 2019. He's Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE.